together. Now we're going to be naming ionic compounds. Um, and this assumes that you've memorized all your ion names. This is an online course, so you can have your nomenclature list handy while you do this. It goes faster if you have them memorized, but please have your nomenclature list handy so uh, that you can work through this and get the right answers. As far as naming, you're going to put the names of the ions together. Um, I mean, that's pretty much how you do ionic compounds. And just to, to be clear, there's no number prefixes. In the next lecture video, next lecture outline video, we will use number prefixes. So just um, want to be clear about that. Be as clear as mud anyway. Um, and you will use the smallest possible numbers in the formula. So let's do some formulas to names. So uh, this is going to be, well, again, there's a couple ways to do this, but one thing I like to do is break it down into the ions and then think about what the ion names are. This is the sodium ion. This is the chloride ion. That's sodium chloride. There is a space between sodium and chloride. Those are two separate words, just to be clear. Um, and if you know sodium chloride, which we're probably mostly familiar with, that's a clue on how you do all the other ones as well. Let's see, so here, well, I know I have iron, and I know I have OH, because the parentheses tell me where to break the thing up. I go to my uh, periodic table, I can go to my nomenclature list as well, but in the periodic table, iron is in the middle. We just did in the previous lecture video that iron has two choices, plus two and plus three, and we need to know which one it is. So, we're going to rely on the fact that we have memorized the OH is hydroxide and it has a minus one charge. And there's two of them. And that means since that's two negatives, we have to have two positives, which means this has to be plus two. And we can't name it until we do that. That's how we have to take it apart. That's our process. But once we do that, we can see this is iron, two, and the other one's hydroxide. It's a little bit like there's clues in there that help us figure it out. Here, um, well, I see K. I know that K is potassium, and I can find it on my periodic table in group one. Group one is plus, and that means, and, and so look, I found my metals, I found my metals. The other part has to be the other thing, sulfate, SO4 at least, and then because there's two pluses, even if I haven't memorized the minus two charge for sulfate, it has to be minus two for that because the charges always balance. Put the ions together so that their ionic charges exactly cancel. And um, when you have the formula working back to the name, that's a little easier to see. Uh, we'll use that next page too. It's the name of the element is potassium, the name of the ion is potassium, and then the polyatomic sulfate, which is one of the more common ones. Um, here, again, I, so you've got your periodic table. Find magnesium. Magnesium is in the group two. That's going to be two plus. The rest of it has to be SO3, and its charge has to be two minus to balance. Now, um, I know that this is magnesium. SO3 two minus is one of the lesser known ones. It turns out that there is a useful way to know. If you know the sulfate, take away one oxygen, you have the sulfite, the I-T-E ending. 
So this is sulfite. And let's just put those over here. So sulfate, sulfite. Take away one oxygen. Eight goes to eight. And I'll put that those are suffixes there. That's what the little dash means. Eight goes to eight. Huh, PB. PB, not a transition metal. It turns out that these ones down here, and the only one that's on your nomenclature list is PB, lead, is, has two choices. There's PB2+, plus and there's PB4+. Plus. There's my four fingers. So this is lead. Two, iodide is a halogen. So it's minus one. It's a process. You will figure it out. I apologize if I went a little quickly there, but I did show you my process. And the more practice, and this is why we're going to have uh, nomenclature probably on every homework, at least a couple problems, to get you to, can to practice it. Now let's go the opposite way, name to formula. Zinc, well, you may have to consult your list here. You may have to check zinc. Zinc is a transition metal, but as we talked about, zinc excuse me, has only one option for its charge. That's my ZN, by the way. And it turns out it is two plus. Cyanide is minus. And again, I would suggest making flashcards. However you memorize best, please do. All right. And now um, some people do the what's called the crisscross method. Whatever the charge is here, it becomes the subscript for cyanide. Whatever the charge is here, it becomes the subscript for the zinc. You end up with zinc with two cyanides and the one needs not to needs to be not written uh, so please don't write it I guess it can be part of your process and that's great I love process but it shouldn't be in your final answer please now whenever you do the crisscross method which is really just a, a sort of a, a shortcut method for canceling the charges, do make sure that you have the smallest numbers possible here. Every once in a while, you end up with two plus and two minus charges. And if you bring them down, you'll end up with twos and twos down there, which you'll need to simplify. I don't know if we'll see that in these examples, but let's see. We'll work at least three of them. Copper one, ah, thank goodness. The uh, Roman numeral is the charge, so that's a break. Then sulfate, well, if we don't remember it, or if we do, we can look it up. Do the crisscross method. Uh, since there's only one sulfate, I think that's right, yes, then we don't need any parentheses around it. It's only when there's more than one of a polyatomic ion that you need parentheses. Magnesium nitrate, magnesium, two plus nitrate, minus, and again, we've got our nomenclature list handy. It goes faster if you know them, but you always want to check your work and make sure you get it right anyway for the homework. Crisscross. And since there's two of them, I do need um, parentheses there. 
please do these three as part of your lecture notes.